Hi, I'm Julia Zamiro and this is Home Delivery. Today I'm meeting someone who's been our constant companion for 50 years. She sung and danced and interviewed everyone who's anyone and she's been the queen of daytime and breakfast TV. It's the effervescent Kerry ann Kennelly. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> This amazing male energy car and this female oh. beauty. <laughs> Hello, Kerry Ann. It's so good to see you. Mwah. 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 How are you? Fantastic. Is this car familiar? Dad had one of these and it's got to be 1971. Slightly lighter colour. This has got seven litres. So uh, his was more standard. He was doing his midlife crisis, I reckon. I look back now. Now, you're a Queenslander. You don't live here anymore. Is this... Does it still feel like home? It does. Once a Queenslander, always Where's a Queenslander. A Queenslander? You really do maintain, I think, you know, being down to earth, you don't yeah. take yourself too seriously, mm. you don't mind frizzy hair and hot weather. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of things you've got to get used to in mind. Queensland. And we've met you here in Sandgate. Now, tell me about Sandgate. Sandgate? It's Morton Island out there. Yes. No surf. Yes. And it's mud flats. So when that tide goes out, not attractive and can be quite stinky. Be quite stinky. Yeah, but all this is terribly glamorous now. Is it really? It's oh. completely changed. When I grew up, perhaps not so. Not so much. Uh, but yes. very glamorous now. Very, very nice. So this is our waterfront. Uh, this is your waterfront. I'm so excited <laughs> to be spending the day with you. Should we get going? Are you, are you scared? Uh, not of you driving. driving. No. Hey, OK. No, no. I this. feel full confident. But this is so much fun. It's a beautiful car. <laughs> OK. The only she's thing kicked that... her shoes off. She's got beautiful nail polish on. Look at her go. Like, yeah. she's done it her whole life. Ever since her first appearance on Brisbane TV at just 13 years of age, Kerry ann Kennelly has lived her life on our television screens. She's done it all, sung and danced and asked the questions, probing or playful of everyone who's anyone. Welcome back to Midday. The entertainment world would be utterly unrecognisable without her vivacity and vitality. Kerry ann I'm interested to know, how would you describe yourself professionally? I love a chat. You love a chat? I love a chat and um, I love to talk to people. I I'm just a, an interviewer. I mean, you're someone who kind of really works with people, listens to people, connects with people. Well, yeah, I mean, well, that's what interviewing is. You've got to listen, mm. number one, listen. Mm. But if somebody changes, you've got to be able to move with them and change direction. Now, we seem to know so much about you, Kerry ann and yet I don't think we really do. Do you consider yourself a private person? Um, yes, I think there are a lot of parts when you close the front door uh, and you sit at home, uh, but I don't think there's anything too mysterious about me. So, um, uh, I think I'm a fairly open book, and I don't think I've tried to hide yes. um, anything in my life, because that's right, I've got nothing interesting to hide. No. Now, we're going off to your house now. Yeah. So, God, that's still bush down there. Yeah? That is still bush. Man. <gasps> Where's home? Where's home? My God, I think I missed it. You missed your own house. Oh, my God. Now, which one's your house? I have no idea. I know. You didn't know. It's this one here. Oh, that's yours. Oh, I could have, should have counted up from the end of the street. I my know. My house looked nothing like that. OK. How long did you live here till? Oh, till I was probably 21. Yeah. How has it changed? Completely. There is there's no resemblance whatsoever except the driveway, which I think that is the driveway Dad laid. Oh. Dad built the house all by himself. So you were living there with your mum and dad, uh, Eddie and Grace, your brothers Mal, Russ and your sister Jan. Are you and your siblings uh, similar? No. I think we are all 
completely different. Because I was the youngest and four years younger than my sister and Mal and Jan were very, very close, only a year apart. So I was sort of the annoying one. That they, oh, God, very annoying. <laughs> you just ask my... I was the really annoying one that always wanted to go with the big kids and I wasn't always invited to go with the big kids. Right. So I was always the tag-along. I love uh, Mal, Russ, Jan, Kerry ann It's so Queensland. Yes, I isn't it? <laughs> it's very... <laughs> the most quintessential Queensland family names. Yeah. I love it. Russell. Russell, Malcolm. get out of there. When you look at it now and it's so completely changed... Well, it's, it is. And I remember... Dad had a beautiful fence at the front with all the, um, uh, you know, the brick, brick fence there. It was a tight turn in and maybe once, maybe, maybe. Um, I hung the car up on the right-hand fence. And I'm entrusting my life with you. Mm. Mum was very annoyed and I thought Dad's going to kill me. And Dad says, it's all right, dear, we'll talk about it later. Because Dad was so kind. He and he never did, I bet. And he never did. Was it a noisy household? Um, yeah, I, I think, you know, there were always kids in it. There was always people. Mm. So, yes, it was full on. Strict? Was there a strict upbringing? No. No, Mum and Dad were just Mum and Dad. And because we had a huge backyard, the boys would go and play cricket. So there was always something going on. I'm interested to know if you had a television in the house. No, not for a long time. Not for a long time. When you eventually got one here at home and you were watching it, ever the thought? Yeah, I did. That I, you'd be on it. I remember saying to Mum, I'd come home from school when we got a TV and it was Uncle Jim Eiloff in an afternoon program and I said, Mum, I'd like to do that. And she said, yes, dear. Um, so I eventually would ring Channel 9 constantly and get Uncle Jim Arnav, and I think eventually he just got so fed up of me calling, he asked me to come up. All right, let's go to the school. <laughs> He's gone, who's that lovely lady in that car? <laughs> oh, I love this car. <laughs> I think it used to be called the Osborne and the Bee Gees played up there. No. Seriously. Yep. The Osborne and bar, there it is. It's the on the side. Okay, that's the and the Bee we actually saw the Bee Gees there oh. when they were little kids. And I used to go to tennis behind there um, on a Saturday morning. And uh, so you that were sporty was, a little bit. Oh, I was forced to. Did you hate it? I hated it, so it didn't last long. Does it feel little? It does. Now that you're here? Everything feels little. Mm. That was sort of there. It was they, they did sort of join, but they're sort of pretty well original. I think they may have had a new wall or two with it's a cladding. It's so beautiful. Look at it. And this, you used to sit here? This is little school. <laughs> and we used to come out for little lunch. Yes. <laughs> And all this is, I mean, look at that. I couldn't do that when I was five. No, you couldn't. Uh, but that completely original. This. Mm. Did you have them when you were here? No, no, no. We yeah. were allowed to headbutt. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Kids are so cosseted these days. I know. We, there's nothing wrong with a bit of concussion. Nothing wrong with a bit of concussion. Yes. Hey. There's nothing wrong with a good headbutt. Yes, a good yeah. headbutt into a. <laughs> Never heard us. Never heard us. <laughs> Is this all original? It is. These rooms are honestly, you, you, you just look at this and these classrooms, sort of a bit of a flashback. And look at these gorgeous windows. You can see Morton Bay Fig. Oh. If that Morton Bay Fig could talk, Julia. What would it say? Mm. I wonder. Tell me about your parents. Um, how did they meet? Um, at a dance here in Sandgate. I don't know how Dad actually ever got to the dance because I don't think I ever saw my dad dance. But Mum loved, you know, to go to the dances in those days. Were they very similar people or who was, was the one that was sort of more of a driving force in the house or...? Um, you know, Dad was always the quieter John Wayne sort of oh, type. Right. Yeah. Oh, yes, please yes. do some Hollywood. Yes. I like yeah. that, John, a bit of a John Wayne type. Yes, and Mum was the disciplinarian right. and the driver of everything. Right. So who do you think you take after? Uh, Dad. <laughs> really? I would have said your Mum because she's the one who's, like, going for it, doing things. I'm really placid. 
Are you? I am. Carrie Ann Kennelly Placid. No, see? <laughs> no. Bubbly, energetic, well, forthright, see, that's what, that's confident, what I think. ambitious. I don't think I actually ever had that full confidence. What I had was bravado. Even when I was a kid, when I'd go and do the mimes and the singing and all that sort of stuff, and I would be so scared, so, like, stomach churning, I wanted to be sick scared. But I, how I justified it to myself was, you know, all those people out there, if I make a fool of myself, I'll never see them again. So I can do it. Mm. Your parents, Eddie and Grace, obviously wanted the best for all of you. What do you think they were hoping you would do, the youngest? Um... Uh, I don't recall being ordered or suggested to do anything in any particular way mm. and I just fell into that sort of showbiz life mm. and decided that's what I was going to do. Mm. I didn't know how, I mm. didn't know which way, mm. all I knew I was going that way so I'd try everything to go that way. Determination, Kerry ann discuss. I probably have been a fairly determined child, you'll have to ask my mother, but I think <laughs> I remember um, her saying I was determined. I think during the years of working on my various shows and at mornings, I think uh, my um, colleagues would probably call me focused. <laughs> but I think that means something vastly different. She's focused. When you were here, you actually coerced some kids into doing some skits. Um, it, it was uh, one of the first ones. There, I used to mind stuff, Stan Freeberg and Lone Psychiatrist, My Old Man's a Dustman. I could still do a routine on that right now. My Old Man's a Dustman, he wears a Dustman's hat, he wears good by me trousers and lives in the council flat. I say, I say, I say. Um, okay, and oh. then there's My Boomerang Won't Come Back, that was my personal favourite. Oh. I've got a lot of trouble, Chief, on account of your son Mac. My boy Mac, why, what's wrong with him? My boomerang won't come back. Your boomerang won't come back. My boomerang won't come back. Sorry, did I go too far? Not at all, <laughs> not at all. Or did you? Because apparently, unfortunately, you did black up for it. Yeah, but you yeah. see, we, we did black. Yeah. We had black leotards, um, black tights. All <laughs> of us were black-faced and I had short blonde hair. Oh, my God. But it wasn't meant to be insulting. Well, I love that. I wouldn't do it now. No, of course but not. But it is a different era. But they're all songs, too, that tell a story. <laughs> so is that wasn't just about singing. You can start to feel that you're actually wanting to tell jokes and, mm. and, and get in there and do some chat and... Yeah. That was my first directing role and producing role. And we took that from the town hall to Channel 9. That was the very first thing I ever did on Channel 9. Wow. How about we go and meet Jan, your sister, at the town hall? Brilliant. How nice. Oh. Ding dong. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> How exciting is this? Yes. Hello, Jen. Julia. This is Julia. Hello. How are you? Very well. Very Sisters. Well. Sisters. Oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah. And we're meeting at Sandgate Town Hall. Yes. When was the last time either of you walked back into the Sandgate Town Hall? I wouldn't have been here since I was 15. I actually, I'm not sure I could do that many years ago. <laughs> wow. That was a long time ago. All right, well, let's go in and have a look. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. This is divine. Isn't it gorgeous? Yes. Now, yeah. we so are... There's my stage. Now, yes. yes. Now, is this the first place you ever performed, Carrie Ann? Besides the living room? Yes. <laughs> That's never counted. That's <laughs> private. <laughs> Public performance was here on this stage. On that stage. It's the same floorboards. Yes. Um, and I've got to say, standing here, <laughs> It has all gotten a lot smaller, but just I still remember <laughs> looking at the these things, sort of trying to think, oh, okay, here's the stage, this is how big it is, and you look down, there's all these yeah. chairs and people looking at you going, <gasps> so yeah. it, being absolutely frightened to death. Now, Jan, what are your memories of a young Carrie Ann? Careful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, she was my younger sister. So, for a little while, she really didn't exist, right? Yeah, <laughs> she was a bit little and yeah. whatever. Um, irrelevant. Irrelevant. Yeah, yes, annoying. I guess irrelevant. Yeah. And, yeah, you were annoying sometimes. <laughs> what about with Mal and Russ? Were you a gang or was it too much of an age gap? With well, Russ, there was a big age gap. Whereas the, our other brother, he's a year older than me, mm. uh, we were very close. Right. Yeah. I was a tomboy, so I used to hang around with all the boys. Were <laughs> you? Was Kerry-Ann a tomboy? 
Probably, yeah. We, we, weren't, we weren't girly girls, no. I guess. Not really? No. Carrie Ann wasn't a girly girl? No. No, no not Carrie really. Carrie wasn't a girly yeah. girl? Yeah. Oh. She's made up for us. I have. <laughs> no, I was always tomboy. Carrie Ann was on TV very young. 